Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans, Doug Bowles here with you for another episode of Behind the Bricks. You know, in a previous episode, we talked about how the TV compound was moving from inside the racetrack to out here behind turn four, but you didn't get to see it when it's in operation. All these trucks, the satellites, the people that are out here, they make that magic on TV, on NBC that we love so much when we watch our NTT IndyCar series. I want to take you inside and see all the things that go behind making that TV look great. So I'm now down here in the heart of the TV compound where it all begins. That TV you see at home, it starts right here. And I'm going to bring in Kevin Sublett, who's the president of IMS Productions. He goes on the road, takes care of all of this for the NTT IndyCar Series. And he's been here 13 years, just like I have. Thanks for giving us a little bit of a tour. It's a busy time for you. So where does everything begin? Well, we got to get parked, got to okay. get power, and then of course we have to go to fiber. We have about 125 to 175,000 feet of fiber optics. All these fibers connect out in the field, it brings back our cameras, it feeds video, and any audio that you're hearing from our announcers is all over fiber optics. So can we go check out some trucks? Absolutely. So you probably often wondered how they get those cameras right up next to the racetrack, right next to the cars as they swing by. Well, that starts right here in the robo room. Talk a little bit, Kevin, about what's going on in here. So for the 500, we'll actually have 10 robotic cameras out. So Kevin Rogers, as you can see, he's coming out of turn two, and he's right up on the wall. So it's where we cannot put a human, it's too dangerous, and you can't make that pan fast enough to cover the cars. We are in the sub-mix room where all the sound takes place. This looks like an EDM concert soundboard, and it looks like it's an awful lot of work to keep up with what the directors are saying to make sure the sound matches the video. That's why we've got the best in the business right here, Rob Sweeney. His job is to surround all that video with all the audio that's right there. So we're on an onboard currently, but the viewers at home, without that audio, it sounds sure. like... The sound is what makes it so magical. So this is the three-dimensional element that, that ties everything together. So one of my favorite parts, and I know one of your favorite parts, is watching those onboard cameras, and this is where it all happens. So Kevin, what's going on in here? So we've got 15 onboards for the 8500, which is very, very cool. So there's three locations on every car that's going to have a camera. One on the roll hoop, one facing back towards the driver, and then one out the nose, which is probably my favorite, especially on a street and road course, because it really shows you the speed. So somebody is controlling those cameras from in here. Which one you want? And is the producer or director asking them where to go? Or are these guys kind of independently making so, those decisions? So these guys, especially if it's going to come up on a pass and you have a camera on board, they actually go ahead and make the pan with it. Each of these operators have a joystick in front that controls that top roll hoop camera. The other ones are fixed uh, locations only, but they, they kind of fly by the seat of their pants. If it's coming, they're going to they're gonna pan with it. So what happens when you get stuff on a lens? Well, that's a great question. It's, a, it's called a tape. They, they push this little butt and it moves the tape in front of the, the uh, lens and it clears it. So whether it's the 75 cameras that we have around the racetrack and in the cars or the robo cams or the graphics, it has to go through somewhere before it gets to your TV. It starts right here. So this is HD5, it's our main mobile unit. So how many people are in this truck on race day? I'd say somewhere around 30. Well, let's go in and, and check it out, that's all right. It's, it's controlled chaos. I'm sure it is, I can't wait to see it. So these, these machines are called EBSs. They're hard drive based replay machines. So I can be showing this to production, but I'm still recording what's going on on the track, so we never have to break record like we used to when, when they were actual videotape machines in there. So all of what we've seen ends up filtering through this part of the truck, and this is the last time somebody sees it before you get to see it. Kevin, what's going on in here right now? So up front on the right-hand side, we've got Daryl, who's our technical director. He pushes all the buttons. Anything you see on, si on, on your TV, be it a camera, a replay, a graphics, all goes through his board. The guy to his left is Sean Owens. He's our director. He is responsible for the overall what's happening on the track right now. We have Renee, the producer, next to him. Renee's job is to tell the overall story Storytelling. What's happening? What what is the behind-the-scenes drama that's going that's playing out? And she's the one who's telling Sean what needs to be done, what's going to go in the air. Then you have the guy back here in the back who is our pit producer. He's got three pit talent and three cameras running around trying to find all the drama, all the storytelling. He tells Renee. Renee tells Sean. Sean tells Daryl. It goes on the air. So there's over 300,000 people here for the Indianapolis 500, and millions watch it on TV. And all starts with Kevin Sublett and his team at IMS Productions. Kevin. Thank you for taking us through here, and of best of luck on Sunday for this year's 107th running. It's of the my Indiana. pleasure. I'm really glad you're able to come out. And just for the fans out there, I think this guy is probably the biggest ambassador, not only for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which he loves, but also IndyCar. And I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Kevin. 
Fans, look forward to seeing you here at the racetrack soon or once again on Behind the Bricks when we show you some of the great things that you don't see when you're just looking at cars on track.